Jackie Lansdale is president of the Red River United Teachers Union. Hey, Miss Jackie, how are you this morning? I'm great, and you? Excellent, thank you, ma'am. So there's an update, I guess a new policy for discipline in in Cattle Parish schools. Update us on what the new deal is. Well, this was just uh, to uh, uh, basically to replicate what the state law said. The state law had come out, they had changed this year that if you were a special needs child, other than gifted and talented, if, if you had a 504, uh, you know, anything along those lines that you could not be paddled. And so we wanted to look at it because that we think we thought that that would you, you have two students. One of them has five, a 504 accommodation and one doesn't. They both did the same thing. You paddle one, you don't paddle the other. I'm sorry. Pa- so pardon me, ma'am. Just idea. C- clarify for us, for anybody you know, like me who doesn't know exactly. Define 504, please. That could be somebody that has attention deficit disorder. Uh, that's usually one you uh, you see a whole lot with. Uh, special, and when you go into the special ed, that's the IEP. That is, you know, something somebody that has a like a learning disability of some type. It could be you know, anywhere on the spectrum of an autism or that kind of thing. So, so there's in, two different things in Caddo Parish. Corporal punishment, corporal punishment can be meted out, I guess, to all students. Now that's uh, and, and special needs kids, the 504s, they were lumped in with the with the entire population. Before this law was passed, that was that was the law, that was state law, and so and what CADA wanted to do was to look at it and make a determination whether this is going to be so cumbersome, you know, that some, some child could be paddled, some child could, be, could not be paddled. So when we looked at it, what we found out of that, that, you know, uh, the, the fact is there are children that are being paddled, and why are they being paddled? Well, they're being paddled because it's an alternative to removing them from the instructional setting. And so that's what we looked at with that. State Representative Barbara Norton tried to get a bill passed doing away with paddling. Um, it, it sounds like you probably are in favor of that, and then it shouldn't be teachers or principals that are disciplining the kids with corporal punishment. Well, the, the, the teachers can't now. Uh, the, it's only you know principals or somebody designated on the administrative ch- staff that can. So uh, Barbara has long, uh, Representative Norton has long been a proponent of doing, uh, getting, uh, uh, get, uh, banning it. Uh, you know, we're just southern states is primarily where you see corporal punishment. Does it work, um, Jackie? Does it work? Well, uh, quite frankly, as, a, as my DECA student, I don't know if you know, you remember the distributive education back in the day? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a student that comes from Bird High School every afternoon, and I asked her about it yesterday. She said, well, you know, if it's not working at home, it's probably not going to work at school. So to me, I thought that was a, a pretty telling statement. But for me, when I looked at it and listened to it, because I sit on the disciplinary, disciplinary committee, it's the fact that it's used as an alternative. You know, a child leaves, uh, it does something disruptive in the classroom, they go to the administrative principal for discipline, and they, they have a, you know, and there's a choice there. The parents have, you know, let them do that. And whether than to remove them from the setting, they will get paddled. So to me, it's not being a punishment as much as it's being an alternative, you know, to something else. So that's what I think the district is taking on is the fact that, what you know, should there be another something else? Should we explore other restorative practices, that kind of thing, which I think that makes really good sense because, quite frankly, what we're finding out is that who typically is being paddled are children in the at-risk, you know, uh, uh, the low-income uh, neighborhood schools. And so, you know, it, then it's very skewed. And when you look at the data, who's getting paddled and who's not? Miss Jackie, does yours or the unions or some of your union members' opposition to corporal punishment in, in the schools as it exists now, is any of that based on um, legal vagaries, i.e., if somebody's kid gets paddled, they end up ter- uh, suing the school or the school system that your concern may be that your members might not be protected? No, they're protected. The state law protects them. But the fact is, teachers and school employees don't paddle. But, you know, from time to time, you will have a child that will say, you know, a teacher hit, push, shove, you know, something like that. And we, and we actually have a policy that allows us to go in and investigate that to see whether that whether the, the findings are correct or not. So, you know, we, we have that, you know, in which allows parents to know it is being investigated and for the teacher to have due process and the school employee to have due process. But as far as the law, if, if you are a, a designated paddler, 
you know, uh, I guess that's the word I would use. Then if the state law protects you. You're going to be you're going to be protected. There are some parishes who've done away with paddling. Um, do we have data yet to to determine if the system they're now using is working better? Well, when you look at some of the different practices they use, in fact, we have schools in Cattle Parish that don't paddle. You know, so uh, I think that's pretty interesting. I talked to a middle school principal uh, uh, last evening, and she said we do things like, you know, things like in the, uh, taking away social time and that kind of thing. And she's and, and because it's the middle school, she finds that much more effective. You know, I talked to an elementary uh, principal. She said we don't and we never will. You know, but there are some schools that still think this is. And again, remember what they're using it for. They're using it not as much as a punishment as it is an alternative to removing the child from the classroom. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, teachers. Yes, teachers. If you are misbehaving in a classroom, but you know, you need to be removed. But, you know, what we need to do as a district is to come up with better restorative practices. You know, not and, and part of that is, you know, some, you know, classroom management. We need to pay a lot more time to classroom management. You know, when you come out of college, you know, you, you, not everybody's captivated with the fact that you know world history. You know, you got you had to learn practices to keep people in uh, engaged in your, in, in your classroom in, in many, many times. It, it is just absolutely overwhelming because you come from, you know, children come from all different backgrounds. And many of these children ha- have not been uh, accustomed to sitting in a classroom and behaving themselves. Parents can opt their kids out and say, no, I don't want you to ever paddle my child, right? They can do that, but, that doesn't, but the law says that even with that, well, Jackie, uh, 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 that there was a case in Alexandria that, that, uh, uh, that uh, as, as I understand it, that a child was paddled because they didn't. They didn't have access to that note, and the, the court upheld that the, that the district had the right to paddle. If you come into the school, they have a right to paddle you.